the White Stripes not only wrote one of the most iconic riffs ever, but also set a benchmark for garage rock drum sounds. Here's how you can achieve that sound. The White Stripes and their gritty garage rock sound are truly one of a kind. The duo, which consisted of Jack White mainly on guitar and vocals and Meg White on drums, was formed in 1997. At the time, Jack and Meg were actually married. A songwriter and drummer himself, Jack White one day spontaneously told Meg to get behind the drums just for fun while he played guitar and sang. He ended up liking Meg's fresh approach to playing drums as she isn't a trained musician and everything she played came naturally. Since they shared their last name, they called themselves the White Stripes and continued to play together until the band's breakup in 2011. Their style and sound could be described as intentionally raw and imperfect. It remained a trademark of the band on all of their six albums. Their heavy use of distortion and Jack's refusal to use Pro Tools for the recordings go to show that so-called imperfection in a band's sound can also be an artistic choice. Perhaps the album that sums up the White Stripes energetic and purposely unpolished style best is Elephant, which was released in 2003. It includes the song Seven Nation Army, which has become especially popular with soccer fans in Europe. This single alone has sold over 6 million copies. You'll recognize the riff instantly. To recreate this drum sound, we first looked at pictures of Meg White's drum sets from the time of this recording for reference. She can often be seen playing a Ludwig kit with Ringo sizes. A 20 inch kick, 12 and 14 inch toms, and a wooden 14 by 5 inch snare. Two cymbals and a hi-hat complete the kit. So we looked at our collection and chose a Sonor AQ2 kit with the same sizes. For a short, punchy kick sound, we used the heads that were already on the drum. A Remo Power Stroke 3 clear batter head and a ported fiber skin head on the front side. Pascal tuned the batter low and the Rezo head medium. And later muffled the drum with two blankets. Here's what it sounds like in the mix. For the toms we did something special. Meg can often be seen playing a red and white painted head on the bottom of her 12 inch tom which she used to tilt quite drastically toward herself revealing the drawings to the audience. Pascal used all of his artistic ability to replicate the design on a fresh Remo coated ambassador head. When that was done, he put coated Remo pinstripe heads on the batter sides of the toms and the coated ambassadors on the bottom as we mentioned. The top heads are tuned extremely low for lots of attack, a low fundamental, and a little tone. And the rezo heads are slightly higher. For muffling, we used our trusty mini muffs from Mr. Muff. Two on each tom combined with a piece of tape on the floor tom's bottom head did the trick. The result is a short, low, and really punchy tom sound. Take a listen. For the snare, we chose a Sonor Compressor 14x6 inch beach snare. This drum had last been used as a side snare in our Snarky Puppy video. If you haven't seen it, check it out. The batter head is a stock Sonor coated single ply tuned medium. The rezo head is pretty high in order to promote the snare wire activity. For muffling, we chose a small piece of tape on the batter head which slightly reduces the drum's overtones. Here's what it sounds like in the mix.
The kit is completed with a pair of 14-inch Pi C Formula 602 Sound Edge Hi-Hats, an 18-inch Signature Fast Crash, and a 20-inch Signature Power Crash, which sounds more like a ride cymbal when played at a medium dynamic. For miking, we used a pretty standard setup. A biodynamic TGD70 just inside the porthole of the kick drum, TGI 51s on the toms, pointing towards the center of the heads for maximum attack. Furthermore, we used M201s on snare top and bottom in a standard position, as well as an M201 as a room mic. For the overheads, Pascal chose a Glyn Johns configuration, which works well on a 4-piece setup like this. One mic above the kit captures mostly the snare, hi-hat and rack tom, while one mic behind the floor tom captures mostly the ride cymbal and floor tom. This setup is a studio classic and was famously used with bands like Led Zeppelin and the Rolling Stones. It sounds quite natural and uses the overheads as a basis for the kit. Lastly, we set up a dynamic worst mic right in the middle of the kit, which captures mostly kick and snare, but in a nice and dirty way. The one we used is a Biodynamic M70 Pro X. It blends in nicely with the snare mics, using lots of compression. The resulting waveform looks like a sausage, hence the name Worst Mic. Before we show you the result, have you checked out artofdrumming.com yet? It's a completely free platform where tons of drum lessons with some of the world's best drummers are waiting for you. Since the site is free and we want to keep providing that for you, there's a chance to donate in the description of this video. Every small amount helps us sustain our work. Thank you so much for your support. With all that said, here's Pascal's version of Seven Nation Army. Next, let's take a look at another track from the album Elephant. The song's called The Hardest Button to Button and has an even rawer drum sound. Check it out. This song showcases another facet of the same sound with just a slightly different take on it. We didn't change anything concerning the drums for this song, Pascal only redid the mix. It ends up sounding even rougher than Seven Nation Army, but in a good way. By the way, samples of this recreation will be available for purchase soon on artofdrumming.com. Now here's the performance. Buttons and buttons. The hottest buttons and buttons. 
Now it's your turn. Did you like our recreation? Do you have any other video ideas? Tell us in the comments. We're thinking about trying some different video categories soon. Also, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so you don't miss any of our videos. We have a lot more coming. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.